Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be our next baseball video. It is on the Chicago Cubs pre-lockout offseason where they made their top three moves of bringing in Clint Fraser, Jan Gomes, and, of course, the great Marcus Stroman, who really controls his own well and has a good job at getting ground balls that I think will work out there well in Wrigley Field and brings in that thrive and energy. I love watching him with his spunk and energy on the mound and also just intuitiveness and smarts when it comes to pitching the game. But let's get right into it. Uh, the Chicago Cubs, one of the under-the-radar moves, I think, of this offseason will be the fact that the Cubs brought in Clint Frazier. Because as I said in a video I did on Clint Frazier in the past when the Yankees DFA'd him, he's one of those guys that just never really was able to find a position because of his fielding woes. But his hitting last year was absolutely butt cheek. It was not good. It was not what you want to see. But when we go back to 2019, he was 267, 265, and then 267 in 2020 as well. 265 is in 2018 in a very short cup of coffee, 69 games in 19, and then 39 and 20. And then he obviously was a very good hitter in the minors. His problem is fielding, but now with the universal D8, that really obviously opens it up for him. And I feel like for the Chicago Cubs, he's going to be a potent, obvious uh, choice there potentially for their universal DH as that comes in. Because somebody like a Patrick Wisdom, who of course is also down there in Cubs land, I think fits in more and can actually field better than Clint Frazier. So you don't have to worry about that. But when it comes to the next move, two years $13 million for Jan Gomes. Some people went like this with that move because they still haven't moved on from Wilson Contreras yet as they have moved on from a bunch of the other core pieces, of course, as the team is now retooling or rebuilding, whatever quote-unquote word you want to use. But I think bringing in Jan Gomes is a good move because it seems like from reading different reports, Wilson Contreras likely after the lockout or at some point this season is probably on his way out and they will get assets for him as well. So having a very good catcher like Jan Gomes that manages the game behind the plate tremendously really calls a great game. And also a guy that would be great to have around for a guy like Marcus Stroman who would be there for two of his three years so they can form a very good bond with each other. I think that was very smart and wise by the Chicago Cubs to do that. Now, when it comes to Gomes, um, stat-wise, he's always been that strong arm guy behind the plate. 247 for his career, but last year had a very good year, 14 home runs, 252 batting average compared to his career total. When he obviously is a 2019 World Series winner and a one-time all-star, a uh, young Gomes has been inconsistent at the plate in his career where his best season was 284 in the shortened season, but then otherwise was 266 when he was an all-star with the Cleveland Indians when he was able to pound 16 home runs. But you know what you're getting behind the dish. He's going to call a very clean and solid game, be able to gun people out and be able to block the ball well back there and manage his staff really well. And obviously with the young pitching the Chicago Cubs have combined with the very good veteran Marcus Stroman, Jan Gomes is a very smart guy to bring in, in my mind. And then last, but certainly not least, also they brought in Michael um, Hermosillo, who's another solid veteran um, minor league guy that you can bring in. That's I shouldn't have really said veteran, but minor league guy you can bring in. That has depth to your core, and then you can potentially have him. Maybe he'll be a surprise guy, just like a Wisdom and other guys were for the Cubs when they came up last year in the rank. But you have Marcus Stroman, who is three years, $71 million. I think that's a good deal for Marcus Stroman, to be honest, uh, to get him for $71 million when you're a team that's retooling as well to get him to want to come in there. 302 ERA, 10 and 13 last year, career 363, one game above 500. But a lot of that has to do with the teams and inability for them to get wins for him. Like he's been 9 and 10 in his career, 4 and 9 uh, on an off season in Toronto. That was his bad year. But then he's 10 and 13 this um uh, or no, he's 10 and 13, yeah, this year. And he was also 10 and 13 in 2019 when he made the all-star team, but the Mets just couldn't get wins for him. He's one of those guys that's kind of been bit by the team, can't get the wins for him, but has had a very solid, promising career. That, again, like I said, is very intuitive, pitches the game really well, and has become a much better intuitive pitcher of the game as time has developed, like most guys do, where early on in the career they're more just hurlers and throwers, and then they develop just the smarts and intuitiveness, which Stroman, I thought, always had. 
it can, it's just people didn't always see it because he had that energy and what people call cockiness. I always thought it was confident to him. And I think he's going to end up doing really good in Chicago. And that's a great signing. And that signing combined with Jan Gomes goes together like toast and butter because it seems like Contreras might end up being moved on from. So it seems like that is a good grouping to have together. Homosilo, we'll see what he's able to do. If he can be a good pickup, that's a surprise piece for you going forward. And then, of course, Clint Fraser. I think he's one of the more underrated pickups of the offseason. Um, just because Clint Fraser has the hitting prowess, was very bad last year, but I think that was a confidence thing since he bounced around and couldn't find a position. Now coming down, it looks like we have the universal DH whenever the hell this CBA is figured out. Now coming to Chicago at Wrigley, I think he'll be able to pick on that porch a little bit where they have the um, basket or whatever you want to call it in the beginning there, or be able to pick on the Ivy and get a couple doubles um, in Wrigley Field and hit pretty well there and become a very potent option for their university age as a very cheap option at that. So this has been a video uh, recapping the top moves of the Chicago Cubs pre-lockout offseason, plus also throwing uh, Homer Silo uh, in there as well, see what kind of depth move he'll be. I hope you all have a great, safe, and pleasant rest of your offseason. Hopefully the MLB can figure out these lockout woes sooner rather than later, but great job by the Chicago Cubs. I would have to give them a very good check mark. And since they were able to bring in a guy like Stroman while they're retooling, and they were able to bring in a guy like Jan Gomes, who's an underrated catcher behind the plate, uh, I would have to give them a A in the A category, probably an A minus for them since they were able to really have a solid offseason and make good moves. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe and have a good rest of your offseason.